I am going to talk about the artificial intelligence uh, research in games. Maybe a slight correction, my thesis was not the first that studied AI in games, but it was probably the first that studied AI in video games, which is a topic that nowadays gets uh, quite a lot of attention, but it didn't when I wrote my thesis. When you talk about games, you might wonder what is a game? And uh, to show you very quickly, the two attributes that I think are essential for games is interactivity. You can act in a game. And the second is that it allows for consequence-free experimentation, that is playing. And that might make games very interesting as a, a study topic in many different domains. Now, I look mainly at AI and games. AI and games have a very long history together. Uh, when artificial intelligence was first coined as a term, uh, the game of chess was immediately defined as a challenge for artificial intelligence, a challenge that was bested in 1997 when the IBM's Deep Blue defeated Gary Kasparov. Until that time, most AI in games research was focused on these two-player deterministic board games such as chess. From the turn of the century onward, other games also started becoming a research focus, such as video games, modern board games, which you play with more than two players, which have imperfect information, and also things like, uh, but that's fairly recent, uh, tabletop role-playing games. And when I introduce this topic of game research to my students, I usually show them this picture, which uh, shows a game as um, a content, let's say the game world, and agents, that is the players of the game, and a player who interacts with the game. So the agents might be AI players. And around this, you see lots of different topics of research. There is, for instance, player modeling. That's something that I focus a lot on. That's also how you build a game that could be with an assistance of an AI, or it could be uh, with uh, automatic game creation with, for instance, procedural content generation, or if you want to generate a story, computational narratives. Uh, you can also see the topic of search and planning. That's the, the typical uh, tree search uh, techniques that I used for um, these two player deterministic board games and the agents they bring a lot of research with them namely general game ai that is uh, artificial intelligence that can play any game behavior learning that would be an agent that imitates a human and believable agents that would be agents that you would mistake for a human and for these tech uh, these these topics there are lots of different techniques and i just plopped a few down here, I'm not going to go through them, but you can see that many different AI techniques can be used for building game AI and for studying game AI. Now, in recent years, and AFA already came up with uh, the, the deep convolutional neural networks, in recent years, these networks uh, got a lot of attention in game research, and that's mainly because of Google DeepMind which uh, did uh, quite a lot of work since 2015, which they at least published since 2015, uh, on the use of convolutional neural networks in games. And I want to quickly go through these and uh, tell you a very little bit about them and also give a bit of criticism on them, or at least remark, make some remarks on them. So the first is uh, Atari games. That was in 2015. Atari games are fairly simple games as Space Invaders, which you can see here. And um, what they did is, and this is what typically what convolutional neural networks are good for, they loaded the screens into the neural network and then let the neural network learn how to play these games. And they, they used a bunch of games, but for about 27 of them, they managed to create AIs this way that were superhuman, that played the game much better than humans would. Uh, which was very impressive. And I, well, I was impressed at the time, especially since they just used the screenshots. But I was also thinking, isn't this overkill? And yes, it is overkill because uh, there's a paper published recently which is research that is slightly older, but um, um, and when I heard about it and I thought, yeah, this is a revelation, revelation sorry, um, 
they played these games also with neural networks, but each neural network had no hidden layers and only six to 18 neurons in, in them. And the same games could be played with uh, this neural network, uh, except uh, uh, that not all of them were equally good as, um, as, as DeepMind achieved, although for some they played the games even better. So it indeed shows that you don't need uh, such deep convolutional neural networks for this. Now, what is incredibly impressive is what they did with the game of Go, which they managed to create an AI for called AlphaGo that is defeated human champions in 2016. And um, this is probably the best approach for such a game, although it's not only um, that it uses deep convolutional neural networks, it also uses a technique called Monte Carlo Tree Search. It's really a combination of these two techniques. Uh, they do it with both uh, training by uh, human gameplay and with self-play, that is called Alpha Zero. And this is definitely a very impressive um, achievement, except that I would like to remark that there is a, a huge difference between how AlphaGo plays Go and how a human would do it. Uh, because if you take AlphaGo, uh, that plays Go on the standard 19 by 19 board, if you would have a human grandmaster who plays Go on that board and you say, can you please play it on a board of 17 by 17, the human grandmaster will be able to do that immediately, but AlphaGo will not. It's like it's, it's overfitting on one particular game, namely the game of Go on a 19 by 19 board. Um, so this is one of the things where you think if you want to study how humans play this, even very good humans, how they play it, it's probably different than what Alpha does. The last one that came up is Alpha Star. And here they, they diverged in the area of the video games. They used StarCraft, which is a real-time strategy game. And they trained a uh, deep convolutional neural network to play StarCraft on a uh, grandmaster level and they actually in january 2019 they defeated two starcraft grandmasters now there is a lot to remark on this first of all the bot that they developed only can play one map the second is it can play only one race in the game it can only play on one particular version of the starcraft engine it had access to information that humans do not have and finally and this is the sneaky bit. What happens in these kind of AIs is that they usually contain weaknesses and humans can exploit them. So to avoid humans exploiting the StarCraft AI that they built, they actually built lots of different AIs. And every game they played against humans, they gave them a different AI because Alpha Star is a collection of many different AIs. So the humans could never exploit these weaknesses. Now, it has to be said, uh, and you can also read that in the paper, is that they resolved some of these weaknesses in later versions. Um, but um, at the final version, at least that was the version at the end of 2019, Alpha Star is strong in playing StarCraft, but not superhuman. Uh, it needs the, the equivalent of centuries of training. It needs a lot of tweaking. It does no longer learn after it has been trained. It still has exploitable weaknesses and it's still limited to a specific version of the engine. So if you're thinking about artificial general game intelligence, this is a far cry from it. Now, the little bit of an issue is that because of all these successes of uh, DeepMind, these deep convolutional networks became like a universal solution. Everybody wants to use them for everything. But are they a universal solution? I would say not. And in the last minutes that I have, I want to quickly go through a couple of games where these deep convolutional networks are not able or probably not able to solve the problems that these games offer. Now, the first, and this is uh, still uh, on the edge, this still might be doable, but deep convolutional neural networks is games of an even higher complexity than I just discussed. Game like Arima to the left has certain complexities, which I will not go into. The one on the right is Stratego. You might know Stratego. The, the complexity of Stratego doesn't seem very high, but it has a lot of imperfect information. People have tried to train deep convolutional neural networks to play this game, and the resulting AI is at the moment still weak. So the techniques must be further developed for that. But I think it's achievable, even with these uh, neural networks. But here's another issue, games for more than two players. 
So the problem which you have here is that if humans play games which have, for instance, three players in them, what you will see is that the strongest player will suddenly find that the other players are going to form an alliance against them. And uh, this is something that is very hard to make a neural network for because you not only have to find the best move, but also the move that will not entice the opponents to form an alliance against you. So this needs more social awareness. I still think that the, the neural networks might be part of a solution here, but it's definitely not a complete solution. The third is games with open-ended action spaces, uh, where, for instance, you have interactive fiction, which you play by just typing English sentences, and they should accept any English sentence. Um, and that is a problem for uh, neural networks because they usually have a limited action space. Or to the right, you see the role play, the tabletop role-playing games. That is humans playing a game around a table, writing a story together, and having an AI be the game master or a player for a game like this requires an enormous amount of social awareness and understanding of the game world. That's definitely uh, beyond what a neural network can do. General game playing is a topic like that. In general game playing, you just get a game description and you have to play the game immediately. These there are challenges for this. They uh, work in uh, board games and in video games. Again, this is done usually with Monte Carlo Tresus at the moment. And finally, you have the whole idea of playing like a human. Uh, this is something that we actually don't know how to do it, playing in such a way that you cannot distinguish the AI from a human. So what I would want to end with as a remark is the following. In games, we find a wide open landscape of challenges for artificial intelligence, for which we at present have no suitable technique of solving them. So if artificial and in general intelligence which is something that most AI researchers strive for, should ever be in our reach, we should be able to take on these challenges in games because they are much easier to solve in games. And therefore, I think that games as an application can be a crucial stepping stone in further AI research and development. Thank you. <laughs>